Now let's shift our attention to configuration management tools. I'm gonna to provide a quick overview. The first tool I want to look at is Ansible. Now Ansible is an agentless network automation tool. It's an open source tool, so that automatically means it's had a, it has a free version available, but it also has paid versions for enterprises. Now you may ask yourself, why would I want to pay for this service as an enterprise? Well, trust me, you do. Because when you have a paid version, you have a bunch of engineers that are available to you in case you run into any issues. You can contact them via phone or they're just an email away. So you want to have access to those support resources if you run into issues. Now Ansible server can be installed on a Mac or Linux and it uses a push model. And what that means is Ansible doesn't rely on any code or agent running on the network devices. The code actually runs on the Ansible server and configs can only be pushed to the network devices via the Ansible server using SSH or netcon. So it's a one-way change that gets pushed to the devices from the server to the devices in that direction. Now Ansible server contains some text files. Once you're done installing the Ansible server, there's a couple of text files that you need to be aware of. The first one is called Playbooks. It's a master instruction file with step-by-step -step tasks. There's also another file called inventory file. It's a list of all the network devices in the network. Then there's templates. It's a baseline config with variables using Jinja2 language. And finally, there's a variables file it's a list of variables that Ansible will substitute into the templates using YAML. And YAML stands for YAML Ant Markup Language, which I find hilarious. Somebody got really cute for the name here. And now here's a visual view of what I explained so far. So we have an Ansible server, could be a VM or a container or whatever have you. We have an inventory file, we have templates, we got variable, we got all these files that are subset of the playbook. And then what we do is we run that playbook via SSH or netconf and we log into the router or switch, or in this case, it's a router. And by running that playbook, you're pushing a certain configuration to that device. Now let's shift our attention to Chef. That's another very popular network configuration tool. It's an agent-based network automation tool and it uses a client server model. It's open source. So once again, it has both paid and free versions and I explained earlier why you would wanna be on a paid version if you're doing this in a production environment. Chef can be installed on a Mac, Linux, or Windows. It uses a pull model. So this is the opposite of the Ansible. Here we are pulling information. So the idea here is each managed network device runs an agent called chef node or a chef client. So managed device is basically a client. Router, switch, firewall, you name it. An agent monitors and compares its configuration against the configs available on the chef server and automatically synchronizes the configuration if it finds itself to be out of compliance. And here are a couple of text files that are contained after you're done installing the chef server. You have a file called recipe. This is the master instruction file with step-by-step -step tasks. The next one is cookbook. It's a list of all similar recipes grouped together. Another one is called run list. It's an ordered list of recipes for a given network device. And finally, there's a text file called resource, the config objects whose state is managed by chef. So let me quickly give you an overview of how it looks like visually. So you have a chef server, which could be installed as a VM. You have a resource file, and then you have a recipe or run list, and the resource is a subset of that. And what a chef node in this case would do, which is a client essentially, is it would actually pull details from the chef server. And when it finds that it doesn't have the information that is expected to have, it goes ahead and pulls that configuration. So the onus is actually on the network client to be able to pull its configuration compared to Ansible, where the change was pushed from the server in the direction of the client. 
Here the client is asking for information from the server. But the big difference here is that you need to have a client, a little piece of software. It's a very lightweight software running on your network endpoint. Now, one big thing to keep in mind is not all network endpoints are created equal. So they do not have the ability, some network endpoints to actually have a client installed or an agent installed. So you have to be very careful when you're deciding on using the appropriate uh, tool chain for doing network automation, make sure you're picking the right solution for your environment. In other words, if you have a lot of old Cisco gear in your network that you're not planning on replacing anytime soon, then you should probably look at Ansible instead of Chef. Because most likely the network devices in you, you have in your network today, if they're older switches or routers, they may not have the ability to install an agent on them. So you're gonna to have to rely on something like Ansible to be able to push configs, something to keep in mind from a real world perspective. And finally, we're gonna look at Puppet. This is another very popular network automation tool. Once again, very similar to Chef, it's an agent-based tool, client-server model. It's open source like the rest. It has both free and paid versions available. Puppet Server, also known as Puppet Master, can be installed on a Linux or Windows. It also uses a pull model, very similar to Chef. Each managed network device runs an agent called Puppet Agent. An agent monitors and compares its configuration against the config available on the Puppet server. And when it finds itself out of compliance, it automatically synchronizes itself by pulling the config. Now, once you're done installing the Puppet Master or the Puppet server, it contains the following text files. It has what's called a manifest. This is the master instruction file, and it contains what's called the desired end state of the network endpoint or puppet agents. And then it has another text file called resource or class or module. Typically, these terms refer to manifest components with module being the largest component. And then within module, we have different classes. And then within classes, we have resources. And finally, we have Templates. It's a baseline config used to generate manifests by substituting variables into the template. Here is how Puppet works. We have a Puppet Master, which is a Puppet server installed as a VM. We have templates and variables, which are basically a subset of the manifest. And then we have a Puppet Agent. Puppet Agent pulls details from the manifest to compare the config that it has against the desired state defined in the manifest. If it finds itself to be out of compliance, meaning it finds out that it's not complying to what the end state is defined in the manifest, it goes ahead and pulls the config. Once again, the onus is on the agent, not the server, to pull the configs. And finally, how do they compare and contrast? I'm glad you asked. This chart right here provides clarity on how they all operate. First, looking at the master file, right? So Ansible has playbook. Chef, it's called manifest. Puppet, it's called recipe or a run list. The protocol required on the network device in Ansible, it's SSH and netconf. In the case of Chef and Puppet, we rely on HTTP, which basically means we're relying on the northbound APIs. Now, Ansible is agent-less. We don't need to run a piece of code on the endpoints, whereas Chef and Puppet both require an agent to be ran. Now, that said, I want to let you know, both Chef and Puppet have standalone agent-less solutions as well, but they are a lot more kludgy to implement and not very popular. Typically, for an agent-less Ansible is the most popular solution out there. And finally, Ansible is a push model, meaning information gets pushed from the server down to the client. Whereas both Chef and Puppet, it's a pull model where the client or an agent running on the end point is responsible for pulling the config to ensure it's in compliance. 
Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.